G'day, I'm Alistair Christie, and this video is all about class constructors. Um, let's create a new console application, and we'll do a bit of boilerplate code. And I'm going to create a new class. And on that class, I'm going to add a class constructor. Now, class constructors and destructors are very much similar to initialization and finalization sections in units, except of course they're associated with a class. And that has a few advantages and a few disadvantages, but first let's create my class name and we'll call it a type string and we'll just initialize that like so. And I'll do a simple, so, so if we run that, we get, hello, my name is T Animal. So that's uh, fairly straightforward. So with class constructors, you're only allowed one. So, and, oops, yes, we've got uh, multiple class constructors, not allowed them. So we get all that. Yes, and we can have a, have a destructor, and they're similar to an initialization section except in that you the compiler can actually optimize out uh, t animal so if i didn't have if i get rid of this line here uh, and put a breakpoint and run this we see it's the class is not initialized it's been optimized out by the compiler because we're not referencing it and so it's <laughs> Uh, whereas with an initialization section, it wouldn't get optimized out. That that may be desirable or undesirable. And basically, you just need a reference to which is called tanimal.classname. That class method will now be called because we now have a reference to um, tanimal in our code. So we are stopped. And carry on. So I can create a descendant of T animal, like so, and let's get rid of that. T animal and T dog. And if we run that, we get, hello, my name is T animal twice. This is because the as I mentioned earlier, the class constructor is only called once, and this class variable is shared between T animal and T dog. So there's only only one of them. So very much like a global variable. I can write a class constructor for T dog, like so, and I could write this exact same code, like so. Now, if you run that, uh, this class variable is going to get assigned. What's either going to be T animal or T dog? It should, in theory, be, oh, I would have thought T dog, because uh, it'll get T dog be created after T animal. But let's run this. And it's, hello, my name is T animal, um, which is, when I originally wrote this, not what I expected. But if I set breakpoints, we can see that this class constructor has been optimized out because it's never called. So it's kind of an interesting, not what I would have expected because we're yeah, not actually ever create, creating and using an instance of T dog. We're calling my class name, which is actually on uh, T animal. So there's, there's no, no, no instance, no, or no, not even an instance, no, no reference to T, T dog actually here, even though we're using t-dog. So if you want that to work, just do a program reset. We can call class name, which is on t-dog. It's a class method, uh, class function. 
And this time, when we run it, we'll see that we're stopping on tdog.create. Uh, we should have stopped on tanimal as well. And we end up with, hello, my name's tdog twice. So I hope this was an interesting video. Uh, it's a little bit odd. I was hoping to use class constructors for something clever, but uh, it turns out that's not going to quite work how I wanted. But hopefully this gives you uh, some ideas on how to use them. I'm Alistair Christie. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll catch you in the next one.